but going into uh, the challenge extreme, they started off that by talking about that. And you were saying at that time, it was extremely hard for you losing your mom. And you were talking about the space that you were in and how you felt like it was an escape. So all of that, um, I was telling one of my friends that back then, there wasn't spoiler pages that I knew of. And so whatever happened, it would happen in your location, wherever it happened and got recorded. And the editors would see it as a whole story and then build up to the whole storyline. So they started with that and that led all the way up to the whole um, Christian incident. Um, so I wanted to know, do you feel like the mental space that you were in at that time was the reason it went down the way it went down? Or would you say that it was the incident itself? I think that it's a little bit of both. Okay. But I think the part that weighs more than, you know, where my mental state was, was the fact that here I am, early 20s, there's this guy who's older than me, drunk, 11 o'clock at night. I'd asked him several times to move out the way because he was blocking the exit to the bus. And uh, he wouldn't move out the way. And he just kept using the N-word, saying, I can say what I want to say. And in, 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 you know? So there's a lot of things that play into that moment. You know, there's me being asleep on the bus, LT and Christian coming back to the bus, you know. They may have been joking. They may have not been joking with each other, but they were, you know, being loud, saying whatever they were going to say. I get up and say, hey, y'all, look, it's it's one bus. Like, it, I was asleep. Y'all came back here to be loud. I could be loud outside. Like, y'all got to be loud here. And, you know, he uses the N-word. And I'm like, look, I don't care if you're joking with him or not. You don't use that word around me. Yeah. But this is 2000. You know, this isn't 2022 where there's all these fancy or all these fancy um, terms, academic terms that can be applied to trying to unpack why somebody uses the N-word. This is 2000, right? So, you know, one could one could go back into time and overanalyze the circumstance. I was there. I just remember wanting Tim to leave and get out of my way. He wouldn't leave. He wouldn't get out of my, we wouldn't move out the, um, the walkway area, whatever, on the little bus. It was very thin. It wasn't thick. And he kept using the N-word at me in my face. And, um, you know, if my mom hadn't have died, maybe one could say, well, maybe if her mom hadn't have died, she wouldn't have hit him. Yeah, I mean. Because it's like, I don't know. Because that didn't happen. That wasn't a circumstance. Yes, my mom had just died. Yes, I spent many nights, like, crying myself to sleep thinking about her um i also spent many nights not crying myself to sleep like i think i won a couple of or did really well on a couple of missions before that happened you did. So, yes, you, did. Um, you know to say that to, to really unravel where my head was at when a drunk guy is like in front of my face and not moving out the way and is adamant about calling me a nigger like uh, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm unpack where my head was at. Yeah, I, like I, I'm I, glad I you confirmed that, that to me because that was my feeling on that situation. Is that they were <laughs> shifting the focus yeah. off of him saying the n word and onto your mental state because yeah. that's what everybody was saying. And there was even a moment in there yeah. with um, James where he was like, "She's a ticking time bomb." You know, if this hadn't happened with uh, him she would have hit me. And people were like, oh yeah, we don't know if she's going to hit us. Like it was just kind of a thing about your reaction. And the only person I really heard talk too much about what he said was um, Camila. I saw her, she pulled him to the side and was like, this is why Ayana probably felt the way that she felt. This is why saying this is not right. And his response is kind of like, well, you guys say it to each other. So what's the and problem? I never said it. Like that's <laughs> never been a a thing. Like for me, like that was, and definitely back then. I think now, every now and then, things kind of slip out just because of time and distance. But 
Yeah, so I, then I was at Howard too. Come on now. Did you I, feel I like I wasn't you, used like that? Was like, like I don't know. I'm not saying that Howard graduates don't use that word. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But back then, in the group that I was in, and my friendship group, and you would never hear that word come out of my mouth because there are too many other words that I, in the English language I could choose from to use to either talk about somebody in a way that was uh, would represent brotherhood or to demean someone. But I would never use that one because of just who I was and who yeah. I am. So at that time in my life, definitely wouldn't use it. And you know, at that point, I'd only had somebody call me that word or say that word in my face like that once, mm. you know. Leroy talks about an incident that happens on his- I season. know that exact incident. Yeah, he talks about this incident and he recently, you know, spoke on it and he apologizes to his himself yeah. Or not doing more or saying more at the time because he really wanted to stay. He didn't want to get kicked off, yada, yada. And the only issue that I had with what he offered to everyone was the fact that I'm like, you don't have to apologize when you've been victimized. And if you have to say to someone, oh, you haven't been victimized, you haven't been, you're already rationalizing. Yeah, you're already rationalizing because when someone hasn't been victimized, you don't have to even say those words. Nobody says, oh, those little kids over there haven't been victimized on the playground. No, because they weren't. They're sitting there swinging on a swing. You don't have to say that. But in these circumstances where black people are marginalized and they're put in these these intense situations, you know, where here I am, I'm a female at 11 o'clock at night. And this guy is standing in front of me using the N word, being belligerent, and he's drunk, and he's getting beer on beer spit all over my face to to chastise me for my reaction. I think it is very unfair. It's unfair. It's, it is asking somebody to be a little bit more than a human being. Which we can be. I mean, that's the ch that's what the challenge has now become more, to, more than a to human represent. Being. You know, mm -hmm. it has come to represent that. At mm -hmm. that time, it hadn't gotten to there yet. Mm -hmm. It was literally mm -hmm. some reality show folks going through some activities. It wasn't what it is now. Then, mm -hmm. um, but for there to be this expectation that I am supposed to be superhuman. Yep. Yep. Whereas other people can be less than human and have less than a humanity in dealing with others and it be rationalized, you know, I think that that, that, that speaks to our society, you know.